So in this video, we're going to continue talking about cyclin D. It is a major regulator of the G1-S transition. It is commonly dysregulated in human cancers. So we need to first talk about how, how cyclin D is regulated, which we'll cover in this video, and then we'll talk about cyclin D's function in the next video. So in normal cells, cyclin D levels are kept very low, and um, you need to keep this low because when cyclin D levels rise, and we'll see what triggers the rise in cyclin D levels, that will push cells from G1 phase into S phase. So cyclin D levels can be regulated at many different places in the cell. We're going to focus in this video on the transcriptional regulation of cyclin D. We'll talk in a later video about regulation of cyclin D at the post-translational level. In many human cancers, as I mentioned before, cyclin D levels are very high, and we'll see at the end of this video why they can be high. So uh, before we get into talking about cyclin D and how it's regulated, we should mention that there's a family of cyclin D proteins. So there's cyclin D1, cyclin D2, cyclin D3. Uh, cyclin D1 is the major regulator of G1 to S transition um, in many cells that are involved in cancers, like epithelial cells. So we focus mostly on talking about cyclin D1. So if you hear me talking about cyclin D, it's typically referring to cyclin D1. So the cyclin D1 protein is encoded by a gene called CCND1. Now, um, what regulates the CCND1 gene? Well, if we're talking about gene regulation, we're probably talking about transcription factors. And you hopefully recall transcription factors are proteins that bind promoters and transactivate genes. They recruit RNA polymerase, the transcriptional machinery, to come and transcribe the gene. So um, we're talking about regulating cyclin D at the gene level. Now, what regulates transcription factors? Many things can regulate transcription factors. In this video, we're going to focus on kinases that we've covered in previous videos that regulate transcription factors. And so when the cyclin D protein is produced, what's it going to do? We'll talk about that in later videos about how cyclin D joins with CDK4 and 6 to phosphorylate proteins, a very specific protein called RB, and how that drives the cell through the cell cycle. But this video is not going to focus on what cyclin D does, the protein. Uh, we're going to focus on the cyclin D gene and how it is regulated. So um, the cyclin D1 gene, CCND1, is typically uh, not very highly transcribed, not transactivated. It is, on, it is not turned on in cells that are in G1. So cyclin D levels are very low. Um, what regulates that? Well, cyclin D1, the cyclin D1 gene has a very complicated promoter. Many things can bind the promoter and control the gene expression of cyclin D1. So we're not going to learn everything that regulates cyclin D1 promoter, but we're going to learn a few transcription factors that can bind. So, and this is not an exhaustive list. So in previous videos, we introduced these transcription factors, FOSS, June, MYC, beta-catenin, and STAT. And actually, STAT, I'm not sure I introduced that in a previous video. STAT's just another transcription factor. It's going to be regulated by a kinase. All of these transcription factors are regulated by kinases. So phosphorylating them will have an effect on their activity. And all of these transcription factors can bind promoters and turn genes on. So they can turn on many genes. We are going to focus on cyclin D1 for these transcription factors. So um, what we talk about when cells are in G1 and cyclin D levels are kept very low is that these transcription factors are inactive in respect to the cyclin D1 gene. They're not binding the promoter. They're not turning the cyclin D1 gene on. So cyclin D1 levels are low because these transcription factors are not promoting the transcription of the cyclin D1 gene. What controls these transcription factors? Well, lots of things control them. We're going to talk about kinases that control them or regulate these transcription factors. So we've covered in previous videos the RAS, RAF, MEC, ERK pathway and the PI3 kinase AKT pathway. And in most cells that are in G1, these two kinases, ERK and AKT, are not active. They're inactive. And so they're not phosphorylating their substrates. And that's going to lead to these transcription factors being in an inactive state. Um, we didn't cover uh, in other videos, but we should, um, and maybe I will make a video on it, the JAK kinases, which 
uh, are kinases that are activated by cytokines binding cytokine receptors. So JAK kinases play a very important role in many immune cells or in immune signaling. So um, in most cells that are G1, the JAK kinase is not active and they're not phosphorylating their substrates, which I will tell you is, are the stat transcription factors. The last kinase I will mention is GSK3 beta, which is actually a kinase regulated by many things, including AKT. So uh, we learned in the previous videos that when GSK3 beta is not phosphorylated by AKT, this allows GSK3 beta to stay in its active state. So it's a kinase, it is active, it phosphorylates actually two of these transcription factors, and these are inactivating phosphorylation. So when GSK3 beta phosphorylates June or beta catenin, those phosphorylations help keep those proteins inactive. They're not turning on, uh, they're not executing their transcription um, factor function, not turning on the cyclin D1 gene. So again, this is not an exhaustive list of how all these transcription factors are regulated. Many other things can regulate these transcription factors, but here's just an example of some of the kinases we learned that are often dysregulated in human cancers, um, how they regulate the transcription factors, which regulate, regulate the cyclin D1 gene. Now, oh, and before we go to the next slide, um, the result of this is when cells are in G1, that the CDK4 or 6 kinase, which depends upon cyclin D1, is not active, right? These kinases depend on binding to cyclin D1, but cyclin D1 levels are low or non-existent, so this kinase is not active. Well, when cells are exposed to growth factors or other extracellular signals like cytokines, for example, um, this is going to change, right? So what's going to happen to these kinases? Well, ERK, AKT, JAK kinases, they can all become activated by extracellular signals. So things like growth factors, EGF, FGF, PDGF, cytokines, bind cytokine receptors, these will trigger the activation of the ERK kinase, the AKT kinase, the JAK kinases. So when these kinases are active, they will phosphorylate their substrates. Um, we do will recall that uh, AKT will actually phosphorylate GSK3 beta, inactivating GSK3 beta, so it can no longer phosphorylate and inactivate beta catenin or June. So the end result here is that these transcription factors are now put in an active state either directly, because ERK can phosphorylate some of these transcription factors, either directly or indirectly, phosphorylate a kinase that will phosphorylate the transcription factors or turn on these transcription factors. So these transcription factors, uh, their activity increases um, when cells are getting this growth signal, pro-growth signal. Um, STATs get phosphorylated by JAKs, which activate the STAT proteins. Uh, beta catenin will no longer get phosphorylated by GSK3 beta, which can help stabilize and activate beta catenin. And either way, what all of this is doing is showing you that how transcription factors that regulate cyclin D1 gene can be activated. And again, these are just some kinases that feed into these transcription factors. Many things regulate these transcription factors. These are just a few. So let's talk about what these transcription factors will do when they are active. Well, FOS and June actually will form a heterodimer when they bind the promoter of cyclin D and turn on cyclin D1. FOS and June actually have another name when they heterodimerize. It's actually a very common name, which we should talk about, AP1, sometimes known as uh, AP1 complex. So AP1 is just another name for the heterodimer of the FOS transcription factor and the June transcription factor. They form a heterodimer, they bind promoters, and they turn many genes on, one of which is this very important cyclin D1 gene. Um, these other transcription factors will actually also form heterodimers. Many transcription factors function as heterodimers. So MYC actually heterodimerizes with other family members in the MYC family, which we're not going to go into. That can bind the promoter and turn on cyclin D1 gene. Beta catenin will heterodimerize with a protein called TCF, which can bind the promoter and turn on cyclin D1 gene. Let me move out of the way here. And you can see stats, uh, the stat proteins dimerize. They can turn on cyclin D1. So um, many proteins that are transcription factors 
that are play a very important role in the cell cycle, um, what they do is they bind the promoter of cyclin D uh, gene and they turn on the cyclin D1 gene. These are a few examples of transcription factors that can turn on cyclin D1. And again, uh, this is not an exhaustive list and many things regulate these transcription factors. This is not an exhaustive list of their regulation. So once cyclin D is turned on, um, that produces uh, cyclin D mRNA, cyclin D1 protein, which can then yield uh, a functional CDK4 or 6 kinase. And now that it's active, that kinase can phosphorylate its substrate, which we'll talk about in the next video, RB, which helps move the cell through the cell cycle. So you don't need all these transcription factors to bind the promoter of cyclin D. You just need one pair of them to um, turn on cyclin D. But many things can feed into the cell that can trigger cyclin D production. So that's why I show it in this video, all these different transcription factors binding. You don't need all of them binding. You just need the right heterodimers forming in a cell that can turn on cyclin D1. Well, now let's talk about cancer because cyclin D plays a very important role in human cancers. So in most cells that are in uh, the body, um, not going through the cell cycle, the, the cyclin-dependent kinase 4 or 6 is made, but it's not active because cyclin D is not around. Once cyclin D is produced, then that will activate the CDK4-6 and push the cell into S phase. So many human cancers have high levels of cyclin D protein constantly pushing the cell from G1 to S phase and through the cell cycle. How does a cell get abnormally high amounts of cyclin D? There are many ways. So we've covered in previous video the um, pathways that feed into cyclin D1 expression. So these are um, upstream regulators of cyclin D. So for example, receptor tyrosine kinases like the EGF receptor or the PDGF receptor. So those receptor tyrosine kinases, if they are mutated, if they are amplified, if they have point mutations that cause the kinase to be always active and you're having transphosphorylation of the tyrosines, sending signals into the cell, that can lead to these signals getting to those transcription factors we saw on the last slide, causing cyclin D1 to be overproduced. So those mutations, uh, mutations and RAS or RAF, which we covered in previous videos, can constantly lead to ERK activation, leading to transcription factors, binding cyclin D promoter, P3 kinase and P10 both regulate the activity of AKT, which can feed into the cyclin D1 promoter. Um, so many things can regulate cyclin D1 um, that we've covered in previous videos. Those transcription factors we mentioned that actually bind the promoter of cyclin D1, those can be mutated. So there are amplifications in FOS or amplifications in MYC. Having abnormally high levels of these transcription factors can cause uh, aberrant production of cyclin D1 um, protein because these transcription factors are overproduced, leading to accidental transactivation of the cyclin D1 gene. So those are common sets of mutations. There are other mutations that actually can happen within the cyclin D1 gene, right? So the ones I mentioned previously were mutations in things that controlled cyclin D1, so the mutations weren't in the cyclin D1 gene, well, now we can mention that cyclin D1 gene itself can be mutated. And a common mutation in the cyclin D1 gene is amplification. So if the cyclin D1 gene is amplified, the cells will produce abnormally high amounts of cyclin D1 at abnormal times through the cell cycle, for example, in G1 phase when it's not supposed to. Um, so if cyclin D1 gene is amplified, that can lead to abnormal production of the cyclin D1 protein. And that's one of the reasons that we refer to cyclin D1 as an oncogene. If it's present in high amounts, it is pushing the cells through the cell cycle. So a cyclin D gene can be mutated itself or the things that regulate cyclin D1 gene can be mutated. In the next video, we're going to talk about what cyclin D, does, cyclin D actually does when it joins forces with CDK4 and 6 to push the cells through the cell cycle. So we're, in that video, we're gonna talk about RB protein, we're gonna talk about cyclin E, uh, and we're gonna talk about the restriction point pushing the cells through the cell cycle. But hopefully in this video, 
uh, from this video, you have an appreciation of um, what regulates cyclin D in a normal cell and how a cyclin D could be dysregulated in a human cancer cell.